Welcome back to Fox Recaps. Today, I'm going to explain the movie Partner, released in the year 2017. The first scene features a man named Ramov, who's revealed to be a former police officer. But now he's been involved in seven brawls, two escape attempts, a fire in a cell, and incitement to riot. Out of his 18 months in prison, he has spent 223 days in a solitary confinement cell. He's currently being questioned by Katya, a pregnant lady. She questions him about why he chose to be a crime boss given that he'd never even received a speeding ticket prior to his arrest. He responds that it was a childhood dream of his. She then requests his cooperation, but he emotionally hurts her by verbalizing her life insights. He's aware that her mother constantly chastises her for her bad marriage. He also believes that her husband has affected her career and advises her to divorce him. Turns out that her husband is treated like dirt in his office. Despite this, Katya adores him dearly and will not abandon him. In the following scene, Katya's husband, Oleg, an environmental police officer, is pursuing a suspect. He informs his superior about the 12-year-old offender, but his superior mocks him instead. Following this, he approaches a group of young boys and accuses one of their peers of causing damage to an urban plantation. Surprisingly, the young boys tease him as well. Elsewhere, the police temporarily release Ramov from prison in order to apprehend their next target. In the following scene, we see a group of police officers in a police van preparing to arrest their target, Chang Zhenlong. Meanwhile, an unaware pickpocket attempts to break into the police van. When he fails, he locks the door from the outside. Inside the van, the head officer, Lyudmila, informs the passengers that Cheng Zhenlong, aka Dragon, is a triad clan boss who engages in illegal activities such as drug trafficking and smuggling. Soon, Ramov arrives and enters a fortune teller's shop. Inside, he equips himself with a microphone and a camera fitted to his watch in order to communicate with the police. Inside the house, we're introduced to an old fortune teller who tells Ramov that he will regret his mistake and will crawl back to her one day but Ramov remains unaffected by the comment. After this, Ramov and Cheng meet in a car. Meanwhile, Katya and Oleg are both shopping in the same location. They talk about their unborn child and how they want their baby to be an environmental officer like Oleg. Just then, Oleg notices a car driving across the lawn, almost destroying two silver ground cells. Cheng appears to be the owner of the car. As a result, Oleg approaches the car and gives a warning to Ramov. Ramov apologizes and tries to remain calm in the face of the situation, which is contrary to his personality. At the same time, Cheng's girl hurls a piece of plastic out the car window, which enrages Oleg. When Oleg threatens to call the tow truck, one of the gang members fires a bullet at him. Ramov saves Oleg, but he's hit by the bullet in the process. The police, on the other hand, are unable to open the van's door, and as a result, the gang drives away. At the same time, Katya goes into labor. Following that, Oleg drives both his wife and Hramov to the hospital. Suddenly, Hramov's soul is exchanged with Oleg's newborn in the hospital. As a result, Hramov has acquired the baby's body and the baby has acquired Hramov's body. After a year, Katya and Oleg name their baby Vanyusha, but Hramov is unable to explain his true identity because he lacks control over his tongue. He despises living like a baby and believes that his body is his prison. Any attempt to riot would result in his incarceration. Despite this, he has a strong feeling that he'll be able to re-enter the ranks. Despite the fact that the baby is only a year old, his body is rapidly developing, but he hasn't spoken a single word yet. One day, Oleg tries to teach his baby to speak. He wants his child to repeat the phrase, My father is a super cop. However, the baby responds, my father is a loser. After hearing this, Oleg collapses in shock, but Katya is completely unaware. Later that night, Ramov calls Oleg and expresses a desire to speak with him. Oleg, taken aback, takes the baby inside the restroom. Following this, the baby reveals himself to be Major Ramov of the criminal division, who interfered with his mission a year ago. He also mentions that the last thing he remembers is the doctors dressed in green and him flying somewhere. Oleg is shocked and in disbelief to hear this. Hramov then requests that Oleg take him to the fortune teller who he believes has the answers to all their concerns. They meet the old lady who claims that the soul exchange happened because Ramov had previously hurt Katya's feelings. According to her, they should find Dragon Cave and touch it with Ramov's little finger in order to undo the whole process. 
They then go to a mental hospital, where they discover Ramov's body, which has been taken over by Vanyusha's soul. Oleg begins to play with Ramov's body, believing it to be the soul of his own child. Little Ramov, on the other hand, is enraged to see himself from a second person's view. Both of them now decide to carry out the mission of executing the Triad Clan. According to Ramov, they'll devise a perfect plan without anyone noticing, because he's an infant and Oleg is nobody. They then proceed to meet Lyudmila. It turns out that Lyudmila has been working on this case for three years. Before approaching her, Ramov advises Oleg to show some bravery, as he's now a cop rather than a Greenpeace activist. When Lyudmila discovers that Oleg can assist him with the case, she's willing to go any length to put him in Ramov's shoes. Ramov shares everything of the past with Oleg. He then reveals his strategy for finding Cheng's girl. He suspects the girl may be hanging out at the downtown Amarillis nightclub. At night, both of them go to the club to find their first target. Oleg enters the club, leaving Ramov in his wheelchair outside. They communicate using a walkie-talkie. A few moments later, Oleg discovers the girl. Ramov then instructs him to ask her out on a date. Oleg musters the courage to approach her, but is punched as a result. The girl advises him to pay before touching. Following that, they enter a room, but things quickly deteriorate, and Oleg accidentally knocks her down. Ramov asks that he bring her outside because they need to question her. After a while, they blindfold her and threaten her for revealing the code phrase and dragon's location. After receiving the information, they flee the area. Back at home, Ramov warns Oleg that he must be tough or else he'll get busted. On the other hand, Katya, who knows nothing about anything, thinks they're cute together. The next day, Oleg and Ramov go shopping for new clothes. On their way back, Ramov tells him that a couple should have a strong relationship and advises him to amaze Katya. As a result, Oleg gifts Katya some lovely flowers, making her happy. Later that night, Katya wishes to spend some romantic time with Oleg, but Oleg is uneasy with the baby watching them. So, after putting Ramov to sleep, he returns, but he is late. The next day, they both dress up and leave for their mission. When they arrive at their destination, they notice the dragon inside. According to their plan, they're about to call Lyudmila for assistance, but one of the guards seizes their phone. They are seated at a table with a number of other dealers. One of the dealers inquires about Oleg, to whom he pretends to be an honest thief. He then lies repeatedly to cover up his statements. In the meantime, Ramov crawls to the shelf to retrieve a phone and a weapon. When Dragon inquires about Oleg's boss, he points toward one of the dealers in order to save himself. As a result, a fight ensues between the dealers. Dragon is wheeled away by his guards in a wheelchair, and Ramov is able to hide under it. Taking the opportunity, Oleg electrocutes Dragon's guards and approaches him. By then, they've realized that the man isn't actually Dragon, but has been pretending to be him. To their surprise, the man introduces himself as Moonzi. He's just a pawn being used by the real Dragon to ensure his safety. Later, Ramov questions Moonzi about how he knew what to say as the Dragon to which Moonzi responds that an unknown person sends him all the scripts. Suddenly, the random guys appear and kidnap Ramov. They also force Oleg to jump from the bridge's apex. Following that, Oleg discovers a photograph of Ramov with the random guys in front of the zoo. As a result, he makes his way to the zoo. When he arrives, he discovers Ramov being attacked by squirrels. He dashes through the fence to save him. Later, in the park, Oleg shares that he was worried because he thought that he had lost Ramov. Following that, they embrace each other in an emotional hug. At the same time, Katya arrives and is relieved to see them. She claims that someone called her and told her that Oleg, wearing a shark costume, threw the baby over the fence. But upon seeing that Oleg is wearing a shark costume, she registers that the news she heard was correct. Oleg then reveals the truth, stating that the baby is not theirs. Katya doesn't believe him and walks away with the baby. Oleg then goes to the hospital to spend the night with his real baby. The next morning, he arrives outside the house and calls Ramov on their walkie-talkie. He then whisks Ramov away to continue their mission. They're unable to locate Dragon, so Oleg intends to let Dragon locate them. He also reveals that he sent Dragon their location via Moonzi's phone. As a result, they intend to flee and then contact Ludmilla when Dragon's goon arrives but suddenly they're hit by a car and taken to an empty building. 
when Oleg regains consciousness, he finds himself bound in a chair with Ramov in front of him. Ramov has a phone, so they decide to call Ludmilla, but they're surprised to find her there. It turns out that Ludmilla is the one who created Dragon. She reveals that the cops chased the ghost for five years. When Ramov decided to go to the prison in order to gain Dragon's trust, she had to put her ghost into a human. As a result, she chose Moonzi, who thought it was all part of a joke. She also reveals that she hired a hitman to assassinate Ramov, but Oleg ruined everything. Oleg then inquires what the reason is for all of this. She responds that she and Ramov were about to get married, but he dumped her right in the registry office, leaving her broke. She then carries Ramov, believing he's Oleg's child. Following that, Oleg instructs Ramov to touch her with his little finger, as instructed by the Black Magician. Ramov makes an attempt, but it fails. Following this, Ludmilla hears the police siren and shoots herself, blaming Oleg. When the police officer enters the building, she accuses Oleg of being Dragon and orders them to shoot him. Oleg is terrified, but Ramov suggests a solution. Oleg places the gun on the baby's head and enters the car. Following that, Oleg presses the accelerator while Ramov steers the vehicle. They make their way to the hospital's dragon cave where Oleg's real baby is kept. Ramov and the baby both hold each other's little finger, hoping that their souls will be exchanged. Just then, the cops burst in and arrest Oleg. Later, Ludmilla arrives at the hospital to assassinate Ramov. It appears that Ramov's soul has returned to his own body. She tells Ramov the whole truth, and Ramov cleverly records everything, exposing her. In the following scene, Oleg and Katya are celebrating their son's birthday. A few moments later, Ramov arrives at the birthday party. As partners, Ramov and Oleg are now prepared for their next mission. That was all from the video. I hope you liked it. Subscribe for more content like this and hit the like button to help us out. Also, leave a comment if you want us to recap your favorite movie. Until next time, take care.